All right, hello and welcome to the video, guys. It's been a couple of weeks since I have played World of Tanks, really, but since I've recorded videos, I've played maybe, I don't know, 10 games, and nine of those games were with my father when I played one um, session with him, um, probably about three or four days ago. Um, might have been actually almost a week ago now. But in any case, guys, we're going to be in the AMD 178B. This was the only game that I played. I didn't play for like a week, and then I played this game, and now, again, I haven't played for a while because I've been playing Starfield, Bethesda's new open-world uh, RPG game. And I get really addicted to Bethesda games, man. So I've put, I don't know, 70 hours into that game already in a couple of weeks, which... It's probably not much for some people, but that's a lot. That's a lot of hours, right? But something like that, you can see on Steam, like how much, how many hours you're putting into these games, and it just blows my mind, like how much I'm playing this stupid game. But it's a phenomenal game and very, very addicting. And um, if you guys are into open world games, I highly recommend it. But anyway, this is the only game I played, guys. The only game I had no warm up, so I want to kind of start with that and just tell you, like, I'm pretty rusty in this game yet watch what i'm able to do like again haven't played tanks in a week like probably more than that and we had an insane game i played one game in this tank and it was wild man we still lost the game i'm just gonna let you guys know that now um i'll spoil it we did lose this game but the amount of damage i'm able to do in this tank in this game is just absurd so you will see it here and let's get into this game now. So, Skoda is here. I'm taking shots at this guy. It was a mistake for him to try and run away. Once people are in place on Live Oaks, you have to be very, very careful about where you're going to retreat to. And this is what I always tell people. Like, you have to learn the maps and understand where people are going to have shots at you at all times. Sometimes, it's almost better to just hold your ground than to run away because... When you're running away, you're actually running into more guns than you would if you were to just stay hold down somewhere and try and fight people off, right? So what I decide to do, I see the 1357 is kind of dueling with the T-37 in the mid here. I'm thinking likely he'll win that fight, um, but it looks like he ran out of ammo here, so we'll see what happens. Someone else cleans him up, or the, some, I guess maybe the AMX even rammed him, but I think someone else cleaned him up. No, he, he did kill him. So I don't know if maybe the guy was like running around his turret or something like that, and he had to turn his turret to get the last shot whatever it was but he ends up staying alive out here what i wanted to do though because that was the only other thing i was focused on is you know maybe i can pull up to help the 1357 the only other thing i'm focusing on now guys is winning the 9-0 because on live oaks 9-0 is in my opinion much more important and much more vital than the one two three four lines the city and all that like i don't find this area this entire area of the map to be as beneficial um simply because once you take the nine zero line you own these little pockets right here it's in like I guess you can call this like E8 or so area. And then also over here in like F3, F4 more. It's like F4. Once you take this portion of the map, you can win these pockets. And these pockets become very important to win the rest of this map. However, if your team is able to push fast enough through the city, yeah, I suppose that the city, it's not like you can just leave the city wide open is what I'm saying, right? You can never leave one side of the map wide open. If the enemy team was able to push this very quickly, will we be in trouble? Yeah, absolutely. But I just find that it's much easier to defend the city and also win the east side of this map so that you have the advantage in taking these little pockets down here. So that's what I would encourage you guys to do in your light tanks. This map, like, you can spot on this map, but I feel like people think that spotting is much more important on this map than it actually is. I would rather do some damage. You can kind of spot this area. Like, I know all the spots to go. People like to go to the mid. They like to go to these little bushes over here by these tiny little houses, these, like, huts. You could do that, but I would encourage you guys to just try and go east. If you're in any other tank, like, other than... A passive scouting vehicle right like if you're in one of the french tanks or something like that that's fine um, but even then you have a pretty good gun because you have the clip on pretty much all those french tanks so i don't know man i just always find that i'm i'm usually going east especially from this side of the map because i find it's a little more risky to try and spot out here 
There's a good building you can go to from the southwest spawn. We're getting hit by the Panther M10. There's a good spot you can go to from the southwest spawn next to this building that Steel Guts always does. Um, he always goes to that position, and I find that that's much safer. So I'm going to run through here now and watch how I'm trying to help in cleaning all these guys up. And then I'm going to run around the VZ. So this play is really important. You saw how I kind of waited for these guys to be on the reload. Um, and then I took off and the Hellcat has a really slow turning turret. So that's why I'm able to kind of get the jump on him. And now the VZ is in trouble because he's trying to turn his turret. You never want to do this, guys. I know this guy's an average player. He's not a bad player. He was doing, you know, things well but you never want to just turn your turret to try and clean up a light tank you want to turn the whole tank or really any tank that's mobile that's dancing around you like this you don't just want to turn just your turret he's also in the water which means his hull cannot turn very fast but what you need to do is turn the whole entire tank that's that's a kind of a rookie mistake and what i would I would urge you guys, if you play these slower tanks, like, think of that. Like, every time someone's trying to circle you, either back up into a wall or the red line of the map, if you can. But if you can't, turn the entire tank. You need to turn the entire tank. And if someone is starting to go around you and your turret isn't even going that fast, start turning the other way as they come back this way. Because once someone circles you this way, if you start turning the other way, then they have to back up. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying here? So, say I come around this guy, right? I'm going around him like this. So I'm going this way, and he's turning his turret that way. Well, when I come back around like this, if he starts turning the other way, I'm kind of in trouble because now I have to go back this way, and the only way to go back that way is to back up and go in reverse. And when you're in reverse, it's usually slower. The AMD is an exception to this rule, but usually when you're reversing, it's much slower. So do that. Don't get caught up in just trying to turn your turret because you're never going to be able to um, catch up to an enemy that's circling you like that. So that's that. I feel like there's a lot to talk about in this in this game, but it could just be because I haven't recorded in a while, right? But we talked about the pockets. I've talked about Live Oaks several times, guys, so I hope you understand this. Um, but anyway, I was saying that the position from the Southwest is easy to go here. It's much more risky to go um, to this little building right here in, it's like C4-ish, the corner of C4. It's much more risky to go to this area of the map um, from the northeast spawn. I just feel like you get spotted easier and you don't have, the angle is not the same on that house there. So it's much more likely that you'll get hit by TD, TDs that are going to poke this hill right here, like in the D squares and the E squares. So just be careful with that, right? Your better bet is to, from the north, if you're going to want to spot this, go to in between these buildings. There's, there's a couple trees in between like two of these little buildings right here. You can try that. And there's also a bush in like B4 that you can go to. Klaus Kellerman is actually the one that showed me that bush Beef in B4. And you can spot people that are coming through like that. So check those areas out, guys. Those are options if you're not aware of them. But I'm aware of these options, right? And I know what I can do. I can get initial spots and all. But if there's another light tank on the team, especially like I so much rather just take the east side of this map and use my gun. And look, we're at 2307 damage, 101 assist. I'm able to spot the SU, or no, I guess the VK spotted him because there's no V range on these things, but I'm able to get one into the SU. The VK I preferred, I would have preferred if the VK would have came back to defend the base. We were just kind of <sighs> spread out too much here. Right? I'm trying to take shots at the LTG and they're just not going in, man. Oh man, so frustrating. But this guy's going to end up ramming me for the um, the end of the game here, and he gets the kill on me. I could have maybe dodged this, but there's no way I'm going to beat the LTG in this fight. He only needed to get two shots into me. We missed the first two because of RNG. Maybe my aim wasn't great, but we die here, and that's the game. What happened, guys? Well, we kind of had the numbers, I guess, to, I guess, to push the east, but... Once we won the east of this map, the VK went alone by himself to try and cap the base, and the rest of us were trying to defend our base. And this is what I mean by you can't leave one side of the map wide open. By the time we had won the east, their team was pushing in like this because we just were heavily outplayed in the city, right? So this is an example of what I was just talking about. Like we had to defend the base in this situation, right? The base is kind of in the middle of the open. It's fairly easy to defend. You can kind of poke from 
sorry, these bushes here and these bushes here to defend it. But the thing is, they had the numbers, right? And we didn't. And the LTG stayed alive. And the LTG, this is why it's so important to stay alive as a light tank, the LT, LTG took away that opportunity for us to poke and just kind of keep pestering these guys on the base. We didn't have that opportunity because, look, light tank stayed alive, light tank made a good play, and light tank won this game for his team, pretty much. Because mobility is vital at the end of the game, view range is vital at the end of the game, so stay alive, guys. This LTG was a very good player because he stayed alive. Even if he's an average player, he's he played it very well this game because he stayed alive, and this was very, very important. So that's kind of what happened here. I know I'm going back and forth with a lot of different things forgive me guys it's been a while since i've recorded a video but i've talked about live oaks a lot already so i hope that this kind of helps in how you play on live oaks but i kind of wanted to be more of like a supplemental video to the other videos that i've brought you guys it's another example of how you can do 2500 damage in a tier 6 light in a tier 7 game this was right tier 6 7 game and still you know you can lose the game just simply because your team didn't make the right plays right i'm not picking on anybody in particular but i think we were heavily outplayed in the city here um, i feel like maybe we had equal numbers in the city but i have to go back and watch the replay again um, i know the numbers were fairly equal over here but i carried a lot of you know weight in trying to win this 9-0 again we did 2500 damage and it still wasn't enough so just keep trying your best guys um and stay alive in your lights but i would really really encourage you if you're not the only light tank and the other light tank is going over to the west of the spot just put your gun in the east man that's it so let's take a look at the end plates guys I think we've talked about this map enough and it was a first class game 2503 damage i only had 101 spotting right not much assist but wasn't really necessary in this game um and also the because i was using my gun and also this tank can't spot dude <laughs> like this tank has no view range guys so 2503 damage um our amx did 1237 and yeah we just there was just a couple people here that just weren't really carrying their own weight right it's it's unfortunate it, but it is the case um their amd only did 58 damage so i feel like i really i definitely did my part right i always feel like i can do more guys but yeah man i mean they, their kv2 had a really good game their ltg had a really good game the t25 they just had a lot of people doing some heavy lifting over here and unfortunately we weren't able to do the same so that's it we did make 73k and banked 14k in the reserve because i was running premium at the time and we got a 70k mission which is really really nice and that's all guys this is how i'm running this vehicle and you can see we're pretty close to three marking this thing so that's why i have all the bounty equipment on it that's all guys hope you enjoyed hope it's helpful catch you guys for the next one take care bye bye